Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Find that, right? Let's find the, let's measure the electrode potential of the half cell. We'll try to measure. This is a measuring device. Obviously, we don't want to use this measuring device, but here we'll try to measure the electrode potential of half cell. The sad news is that we cannot measure the potential of individual half cell. That means we can only measure the difference and that is nothing but EMF. So if I know potential of this, I can know the potential of this. If this is, let's suppose A and this is B or let's say anode, this is cathode. This is my convention. So if I know the potential of anode, I can get the potential of cathode for a given metal. For example, I have zinc here, I have copper here. But the trick is how do we know this first value? At least there should be first one, right? For whose value I know that becomes a base. And from that we can find out the values. Correct? So what should we know? So if we know the potential of one, then we can find the potential of another. But how to find the first one? Now hydrogen will come as savior. Hydrogen told, okay, I'll save you guys. Now as per convention, as per convention, standard hydrogen electrode for standard hydrogen electrode, my potential is zero. Right? So I'll say using the platinum metal actually, hydrogen becomes H2 plus, H plus actually, right? H plus aqueous. And for this, E is zero. You talk about oxidation reduction, it's all the same, right? You talk about E of H plus to H2, that will also be zero in the presence of platinum. Okay? Please note this is assigned value. Actually, that is not the value, but as per the convention, this is as per convention. As per the convention. Always hydrogen is always in dicey, right? It's metal or nanometal again, a question. So, chemist thought, let's take hydrogen as zero potential, right? You go from H2 hydrogen to H plus ions, or from H plus ions to hydrogen, doesn't matter, right? The reduction potential is zero, right? The reaction is hydrogen will take one electron and becomes hydrogen gas. So this is zero assume value. And, and please note, please note here that the estimated value of uh, this, this is assumed, right? They all assume values. The estimated value is almost 4.4 volt from H plus to H2. That is the actual value. That is the experimental value. Right at STP at 298 Kelvin, this is the absolute value. But just for the basis of comparison, hydrogen potential is declared to be zero at all temperature. Please note, it is declared to be zero at all temperature. But actually, it is not the case. And that is actually you can find out because, for example, you have you can do some maths. You have some let's suppose metal A and metal B. You try with one combination. When you try metal B and C, you get some values. You try A and C, some values, right? So A minus B, you know. B minus C, you know. A minus C, you know. So using these three equation, you can actually find the value of A, B, and C. So what I'm trying to say is, if you want to find the electrode potential of three, three half cells, you take three half cells. And using three half cells, you produce three different cells in three combination. You can experimentally find the value of this, 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 and with these three maths, you can three equations. You can use this uh, maths to find the value of A, B, and C. So with that, this founded value of uh, hydrogen potential is 4.4 actually, but it is assumed to be zero for convenience because anyway, anyway, when you want to find the C, we are not much interested in the electrode potential of half cell. We are generally interested in the electrode potential or the EMF of the whole cell. So there we anyway do 
cathode minus anode, right? So anyway, you're subtracting. So for example, if it is zero, instead of zero, it was 4.4. .4. This was the actual value of uh, cathode. Anode also, let's suppose y plus 4.4 .4 was the actual value, right? But we are assuming it is x and y because we, are, we have assumed this to be zero. But when you find the E of cell, you say cathode minus anode, you say x minus y, and then this gets cancelled. 4 plus 4.4 .4 minus 4.4 so that's why it doesn't make much difference because end of the day in the electrochemistry we are interested in the emf the whole cell so there anyway we say cathode minus anode so this value whatever is their actual value gets subtracted right and you get zero value so even if you're assuming zero it, it doesn't make many difference and that's why it was declared to be zero at all temperature but actually it has a value of 4.4 Hope I didn't confuse you guys. H plus 2 H2, there is a reduction potential of 4.4 volt, but it's declared to be zero at all temperature just for convenience purpose. Because in chemistry, we are interested only in the electro EM of the cell. And in EM of the cell, we generally say cathode minus anode. So even if there is a value here, it gets cancelled. And, and, and we are saying that we are trying to find the value of any electrode with respect to hydrogen, right? So it becomes easy if you say that this guy is zero. And we call that standard hydrogen electrode. We'll understand this. This is called standard hydrogen electrode. S H E C. Standard hydrogen electrode. So the reaction here is you have my hydrogen ions in the aqueous solution. It gets electron, forms hydrogen gas. And that's the gas. It goes off. Okay, so for this, for this, my half cell will be in platinum H2, become H plus, or reverse way, let it put it as well. H plus became H2. For this, my E will be 0. So in this case, this uh, hydrogen electrode or standard hydrogen electrode, it will consist of a platinum electrode. There's a platinum electrode here and this is coated with platinum black. It is coated with platinum black, right? Platinum black. And this electrode is dipped in an acidic solution. This is acidic solution. And this is, please note, is one molar. 1 molar H plus, maybe HCl or any acidic solution, right? And we bubble pure hydrogen gas. See, pure hydrogen gas is bubbled through it in this direction. Right? It comes in this direction like this. Right? And please note, the concentration of both reduced and oxidized form of hydrogen that is H plus and H2 that is maintained at one molar. So this is also one molar. This is one bar actually. That's correct. STP. And this is maintained at one molar. This H plus ion concentration is maintained at one molar. I'll explain why in the Nernst equation, why the concentration of uh, the electrolytes matter. Right? That we'll see. Now, the question is, why did we use platinum here? Why? What is the role of platinum electrode here? See, platinum is inert. Platinum is inert uh, electrode. Correct. So, Pt is inert. Since it is inert, it won't take participate in the reaction. But it will provide surface. It will provide surface for oxidation and reduction reaction. It will provide surface for reaction. It will provide a platform where the reaction can happen. Right? Also, it will provide a platform for conduction of electron, whatever electron is generated. For example, now hydrogen gas will become H plus, right? So electron will be reduced, uh, released. So platinum surface will help this reaction. 
correct so platinum provides a surface for both oxidation and reduction reaction and it also provides uh, a mechanism for conduction of electrons so that is my standard hydrogen electrode here correct i have a hydrogen gas here in the platinum rod and this is a acidic solution h plus so hydrogen gas becomes H plus. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.